This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Tonight, a St. Louis County man is behind bars, charged with killing his mother and his 11-year-old niece. Police say he stabbed both of them inside of their Berkeley home. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. This happened Saturday afternoon, and just a few hours ago, we learned the names of the victims. Our Justina Cornell spoke to the family. She joins us now with reaction. Justina. Well, we've learned the victims were 53-year-old Mio Isha McLeod and 11-year-old Myel Harris. Family tells me McLeod was extremely talented and was a singer. They also say she was all about her family. was her life and so was her family. They was beautiful. They was so beautiful. Families say 53 year old Miyoshi McLeod was genuine and loved hard. She moved from Seattle to St. Louis recently with her 11 year old granddaughter, Myel Harris. They were living with McLeod's son, 28 year old Laurenteo Kane on Redford Drive in Berkeley. I'm like, oh my God, I hope ain't nothing happened to nobody. Their neighbor Carla arrived Saturday afternoon to police taping off a crime scene. I was just coming in from church. And she immediately started praying. O'Kane was arrested and charged with two counts of first degree murder and armed criminal action. He's charged with stabbing his mom and niece to death. Families say he has a mental illness. And it touched all our heart, you know, because she was just so beautiful, her and the baby. The North St. Louis County nonprofit, Jadasa, aims to curb domestic and sexual abuse. This is something we are seeing too much of. One of their targeted areas is Berkeley. That's why this double homicide hits home. As a survivor, the nonprofit's founder, Dr. Cynthia Bennett, wants to empower. Because it's their child, you know, it's kind of hard for them to really want to say, my, my child is abusing me, but it happens often. And so we want them to know abuse is abuse. According to court documents, one week prior to all of this, McLeod went to the Berkeley Police Department and reported her son was making threats to her and her granddaughter. That's why Dr. Bennett wants to partner with police and send a reminder of the valuable resources. And we will do everything we can to assist so we can not have another one of these situations. The suspect had his initial court appearance today and will remain there without bond until a hearing next week. There is a GoFundMe set up to transfer the victims back to Seattle. If you'd like to help, you can head to our website, casedecay.com, and go to the section as seen on TV. Three people are in custody right now after police opened fire on a stolen car in Maplewood. This happened on Zephyr Place, just blocks away from Big Ben and Hummert Memorial Park. That's where we find Holden Kerwicki, who spent the day looking into the case. Holden. Well, Mike, this incident really started when Maplewood police located a stolen Mercedes behind this apartment complex. Police say as they tried to approach that car, the driver quickly took off towards them and they fired multiple shots in self-defense. According to Maplewood police, the Mercedes slammed into a concrete barrier, a squad car and multiple parked cars before crashing into a fence where the suspects got out of that car and tried to run away. Maplewood police took three juvenile suspects into custody and recovered multiple guns from inside that car. Today, multiple people who live in the area praised the police department for quickly making arrests before anyone was hurt. And they were real thorough. I know they were going through everybody's backyards looking for more folks. I think somebody else on, uh, on Facebook mentioned that they had found a kid like hiding under a deck or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of an adventure. But, yeah, glad no one was hurt, including the kids. Really. Maplewood police say they are still investigating this incident. Since the kids are juveniles, it's unclear what charges, if any, they face at this time. Reporting live in Maplewood, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. A few hours ago, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey's team was in civil court. The attorneys are asking a St. Louis judge to reconsider part of a decision regarding transgender records. The AG had requested certain records involving transgender patients seeking care at Planned Parenthood. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski was in the courtroom and joins us live from downtown. Laura. And the court heard arguments from both Planned Parenthood as well as the Attorney General's staff, but didn't make any decisions today, taking the issue under submission. The Attorney General's office was asking the court to revise part of a decision made in their case to obtain medical records of transgender patients, specifically minors. A different judge said in that previous decision, they could not order providers like Planned Parenthood to turn over certain records because they're protected by HIPAA laws. The AG claims that's not true. 
news, saying a court order can require medical providers to produce records and wants that to be removed from the original decision. Planned Parenthood says they have yet to see the AG justify a court order for records. Every time we, we tell you that you need to justify, he shifts the reasons why he wants it. The last thing he said was he was investing, med investigating Medicaid fraud. Well, Medicaid doesn't cover gender affirming care, so that is not the basis for this investigation. Attorney General Andrew Bailey said in a statement, quote, the law is clear that my office has the legal authority to protect children in the state of Missouri. Three courts have affirmed that already. I launched this investigation to obtain the truth about how this clandestine network of clinics subjected children to puberty blockers and irreversible surgery, often without parental consent. We are moving forward undeterred with our investigation into Planned Parenthood. And I'll bring you this full story coming up tonight at 10. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. All right, now to the extreme heat. Here's a live look at Forest Park where thousands are expected for the Muni season opener of Les Miserables. It's going to be a hot one and we are in the middle of a heat wave. We have two reports tonight. Let's begin with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Jim. Yeah, you know, the hottest day so far this year, yesterday at 97, but by the end of the week, we may actually hit 100. Today was 96 for that high. Right now we're at 88. And you notice those clouds around St. Louis and a little bit of a breeze. So we had some showers and thunderstorms around the area, but those seem to be dissipating. So to the south, we've had them around Perry County and you see here on the latest radar, not much is going on. So do not expect any rain at all at the Muni. We'll zoom in to where we had a real quick shower and that really did dissipate quickly right over Vandalia, Illinois, and then a few around Sparta down to Chester and into Perry County in Missouri. But that's about it. Still another chance of a shower or storm as we get into tomorrow afternoon and mainly east of the Mississippi. And right now, though, you see where it has cooled off with the clouds and the showers uh, down around Perryville and Sparta in the 70s, Farmington 80. But then right around St. Louis, still in the upper 70s, and the mosquitoes are out, but that breeze has really kicked up. And uh, that's a good thing. That'll keep the mosquitoes off you. But that Gulf of Mexico is open for business. We'll talk a little bit more about this in Maine weather. But meteorologist Gary Frank is live at the Muni for opening night. Just Many theater goers, especially season ticket holder holders, come prepared for the heat. But Gary, that breeze is really nice out there tonight. Yeah, honestly, as much as we're going to talk about the heat this week and the next 10 days and, and over and over and over again, it feels pretty good outside. Now, I would say when we first got here, I was like, we're hiding in the car, right? Like in between, trying to stay cool, doing all the things that we tell you to do. But now, honestly, it's not that bad. If you're waiting in line, it feels pretty good outside. The wind started to pick up uh, right as those storms started to move from the north, uh, move from south to north, and they've kind of fallen apart. And I, I, the clouds are also blanketing the sun a little bit, and it's a thin variety right now. But earlier today, when we were kind of walking around some of the grounds and seeing things, it was hot. Now it's not quite as bad. Things are improving, but still, as we see more hot days, not only this one, but over the coming days, I did want to talk to uh, the associate director of the arts, uh, Michael Baxter, talk to him about, you know, what are they doing when you got to wear the costumes, right? I can wear shorts and a t-shirt out of here. When you're wearing a costume for a play, things are a little bit different. I wanted to ask him what he thought and what they're doing to prepare. Uh, you asked about the heat and how do our actors and artisans and most importantly crew and stage managers backstage stay cool. Uh, there are a bunch of fans going. Dressing rooms and indoor spaces all have AC. For our audience members, they know that there are blowers blowing onto the space. We have our fans going and of course it cools down at night. So that's the interesting part, right? You know, we've got our natural blowers going right now and sort of in the distance. You can see on some of the fans. And what I found was interesting, and this is something Annie will touch on later on tonight, those fans actually don't make any noise. They used to have old fans that they turn off during the show. They don't have that anymore. They try to pump up some AC. So they're doing a lot of things. They don't need it as much tonight. So I know they're going to need it later on. We'll probably have to talk about this later on. But it's actually pretty pleasant for the first night at the Muni for Les Mis. So... We'll try to stay as cool as we can once that sun goes down. The show starts at 8.15. It's going to feel a lot better, guys. Gary, thanks. If you need help looking for a cooling center near you, just text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355. Coming up, weak warning signs. The reason some state leaders say signs warning people about contamination at Coldwater Creek fall a little short. Plus, still flying high at 96, the plane ride that took 
a lifelong passenger to places she's never been before.